Grace and mercy be with you. And also we have come here today to remember before God our sister Joyce Atten Farrell to give thanks for her life. To commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer and Church. To bid farewell to her body as being comfort or as for the two kind. To comfort one another in one prayer. Now pray. God of all consolation, your son Jesus was moved to tears and the grave of Lazarus is pain. Look with compassion on your children in their lives. Give to human heart the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing amazing words as we remember. <coughs>
page four. I'll sit on prayers before we come to page four. As children of loving Heavenly Father, let us ask His forgiveness for His gentle and full of compassion. We come to God knowing we need His mercy and forgiveness. And so in preparing to celebrate the Rupa Mass, we call to mind our Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ our Lord, who prepared first for us and returned to us home. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised that all who believe in, in you will rise to Lord, Lord have mercy. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of His kingdom. When dust and ashes have no reunion of us. Master Father. Hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew and our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one of God, now. the strength to live by new care in the knowledge of the eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to speak to your children. Alex Matiaba, uh, Dr. John Boko, and the team from Healing Hospital. According to protocol, please identify yourself if you are from uh, Baba's representative, uh, Bakungu. Okay. If they are home from Baba's representative, Bakungu. If they are princes and princesses from the royal Baganda, Hospital of Crescent or Central Master Hospital of Crescent. Friends and families, thank you, thank you so much for sparing your valuable time to come and share us to celebrate the life of our beloved Joyce Faro Katende, also known as Nagatan's half maiden name. If I can go through her names, uh, it's just that when you are born, you are given a traditional name which belongs to your clan. We all belong to clans, our tradition, and that name, I guess, was Nagatans. Usually, uh, pulled from ancestors, usually, it's going to be your paternal aunt. And then you are given a Christian name, which is Joyce Grace, which was the 
Katende is adaptation from the uh, colonial days. That these days we tend to adopt our father's name. So it's, her father was Katende. And then as I narrate later on, she got married and she acquired a name Faru. That's the Faru family. First of all, before I go on, I want to uh, uh, to pay tribute to Miss Lai, Dr. Lai, and the team breast unit at St. Ogans Hospital. Um, that's my name, I'll introduce myself, I think it's part of my name, Jordan Mother. I'm a surgeon, general surgeon, now specialized in breast surgery, and I work at St. Robert's Health Hospital, where Joyce was treated. I didn't take part, as expected, in her treatment, but my colleagues, I left that my colleagues. I came to know that uh, she had local advanced breast cancer of sites, local advanced. And she also had spread to the liver, we call metastasis. Usually when that happens, we refer for palliative surgery, for palliative treatment, and chemotherapy keeps it. This why I'm so grateful, because if you leave local advanced cancer treated, Breaks to the skin, comes at managing was mine. So she managed to salvage this. Did the mastectomy both sides and sample the wounds healed. So we got the second step, we are trying radiotherapy and then chemotherapy. My tribute goes to Dr. David Miles and Stephen Sugarland. These are the medical colonists. They gave up everything, believe me, they get up everything to keep up. Um, after the operation, um, my colleagues told me, you know, you, we've just operated on a patient, and she put your name down as a knock next job again, and uh, I got a shock, I said, look at that, it's You just never told me about her illness. I kept quiet because <laughs> Because of uh, our confidentiality, private respect, I did not tell him on that. I just kept quiet. But, you know, diagnosis is not the end. We have modern treatment which keeps people's lives alive for some time. I mean, when you are diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, your chances of surviving five years is 25%. Uh, it's slightly higher in the United States. Well, the treatment she was given has beaten all that. She survived it. She was done somewhere in 2014. And she lived on for more about eight years, eight to nine years. And believe me, uh, when she was given the diagnosis, she eventually told me, you know, I've got breast cancer, but all I'm praying for that. I survived later so I can go back to Uganda. See my relatives look at my assets. Uh, she was very well organized because I came to know that she had estates, about three, three plots of land, apart from the one she inherited. Uh, she, you know, she was a nurse. She managed to do all those savings. She survived the year, looked well, and she, she said she's going to give herself a treat. So she went to Uganda, chauffeur driven a car, she stayed in a five-star hotel, and she made the best of it. So she came back and actually started working at the living hospital. Um, yeah, and you know, we got on like that, and eventually, chemotherapy shriveled the metastasis in the liver, and we thought it's going to go away. It didn't go away completely. She also had uh, metastasis in the lungs, but after a course of chemotherapy, the lung problem disappeared completely. <coughs> and the liver then shrinked. <coughs> but it didn't go away completely. This 
started working. And in March last year, she told me she's got a lesion in the brain. But that was not the end. Dr. Mars was determined to carry on. I hope you can hear my testimony here. She was referred to Queen Square, where she had cyber knife treatment. This is a stereotactic targeted radiotherapy to a lesion sparing uh, collateral damage to the surrounding tissue. She survived that very well. And at that time, um, I told her, we discussed, I said, look, you know, who knows? I might go before you, you might go before me, but tell me what are your plans. I told her, for me, I've launched you with a, a solicitor, did my will and so on, and gave her all the details. And I also gave her uh, addresses of uh, addresses of uh, Pauline Nanjuma, who is works here. Because Pauline has a plan of you register with insurance, and when these things inevitable come, you already set up your funeral will be okay. I gave her all that. Um, and I thought she would follow it up. Um, so, can 25th September, you know, we used to phone her almost. Every two days. My wife Josephine, she used to phone her almost every day or two days. And as we used to chat a lot. She was very intelligent and she was into this politics, political thing, international politics, labor, conservative, and all that. We used to talk about that. She was very much interested in that. So we used to chat a lot. 25th September, Josephine phoned her. They had a nice chat. And then I came back from work on Friday, this is about three days later. Uh, I phoned her, there was no answer. No. Then I started, we phoned her on Saturday, there was no answer. This is an unusual from yours. Came Sunday, uh, the first of October, we phoned. There was no answer. I told Josephine to let's go and check on her flight. We knocked at her door. No answer. The neighbors came around. We saw a week ago looking rubbish into this tent here. That is. We found the Mount Van Hospital. They said, yes, we recognize that is our patient, but it's not here. We found the Water General Hospital. They said, yes, we know that patient, but it's not here. Then we got concerned and we called the police. Um, the police came again, knocked the phone. No answer, they decided to storm, uh, break the door. So they went up and they came down and they said, Prepare yourself for the worst. Are you brave enough to come? But they called the ambulance first. The ambulance came and confirmed her death. And then the police took us upstairs. I encouraged my wife to come because I didn't want to go to my own. I wanted a witness, I wanted support. And we found, unfortunately, she was dead in her city with some vomitus on the floor. So, um, the, the, the police called me in to confirm that that is her, and I confirmed that, that she was. So that was phase one done. Uh, about a few weeks later, it was all under the coroner. The coroner went through the uh, files, medical files, and confirmed that her death was not suspicious in any way. It was due to uh, succumb to breast cancer. So that is phase two done, and then the court said, look, we've checked in the medical files, 
Your name is there next to the king. That's the Lord's God. Uh, nobody prepared me for that. And he said, if you can consent, we'll arrange cremation. Now, cremation is very alien to our culture. Now, I, I didn't think Joyce wanted to be cremated. And she got the relatives. Um, <clears throat> okay, at the time she died, uh, you know, she was very reserved. I could be excused to say, to think that we were the only family that she knew in Britain. But during her, when she was still alive, she used, well, I used to go to Uganda more often than she did. She used to give me, uh, because she's got, there are three people I knew that related to Joyce. The first one is Ese Katende. This is her sister. She's now 69, something like that. Unfortunately, Ese lacks capacity and she's physically handicapped. And she was being maintained or looked after by a gentleman called uh, Mlef Namskozi, who raised her, left in charge to look after her ancestral home, looking after his older sister. So I knew um, Mulef Naskombi, who was looking after her estate and looking after her estate. And then, whenever I went to Uganda, he has, um, she had a nephew called his son. Other nephews had not done well with her estates, but he appointed Sam. His Sam stand up. So he trusted him and he took over looking after her estates in Uganda. These are the three people I knew that I didn't know anybody else. So when it came to that, they said they want me to authorize cremation. Uh, because I'm next to I told them oh, he's, he's got relatives in Uganda. I have we would like her to her body to go back to Uganda to be buried alongside her ancestors. Then, of course, I didn't have money. Then they said, okay, we'll give you the certificate and you can carry out the, the funeral. And I said, I don't have money. I asked them, look, if you go and spend the money for her cremation, can you transfer that to our one of the funeral directors to help us carry out the funeral? process and send her for the world. They said we don't have a process to do that. Now that was tough. How am I going to say? Joyce did uh, appointing me as next of kin, she didn't give me any paper. We don't have a will. Anything we don't know, we don't have access to her cards. We don't have a passport. I was there with nothing. Um, so I said, I'm going to see why they had to go back to Uganda. So <coughs> I liaised with uh, Sam Mugiobe, her nephew. And we came up with a plan. Maybe Mr. Mugiobe might expand on that. But all I know the summary is that the only way to raise money to help to add us with this funeral was to sell one of her assets in Kampala. And that's what Sam did. So part of her land was sold, she got some money. And that went towards, uh, we contacted uh, Pauline Najuma, and she accepted. Now, when the coroner or the, uh, was the, the council told me that we want to cremate her, uh, we made your comment and said I can't. Then they said, well, you have to arrange yourself. We're going to keep the body in Hemohem State, charging 80 pounds a day. So that was also frightening. And but this is where Najuma comes in. And I'm sorry, she lost her relative and now is in Kampala for the funeral. But she's been a pillar in helping us out. Can you imagine? She says she offered to get the body out of Hemohem State and bring her here. So that bill, I think she said, in a month of 10 days, 800 pounds. I don't know whether they come back chasing for it. So, tribute to uh, Pauline Najuma for that time.
all around. So we got all that money, we got the money uh, through some. Thank you very much for that effort. And then we said we don't have enough money to do anything else. We don't want to have a service. Let her go to Kampala. Then came Team Ealing. Team Ealing, they said we need a service. Thank you so much. We said we don't have money to service. Within 48 hours, 500 pounds were raised by Ealing Team. And we didn't go. So we go on to this plan. Now, the other thing came about is, oh no, we can't afford a Zoom. So we left a Zoom. <coughs> we can't afford a video. We liaised with uh, Stephen Murombe. <laughs> and, well, guess what? 300 pounds raised. We have a camera. <coughs> Now we're ready to go, and our sister or our friend, our auntie, will be able to be repatriated to Uganda to lie around her ancestors. I'm very grateful. I also have tribute to Sam Mujobe officially. He is based in Uganda. He, the council. One thing I must mention, between me and Mjobe, when we saw uh, Mr. Webb, the environmental manager, he brought out a paper. He said, look, we found this in Joyce's house. And that paper is a draft and signed, was assigned to appoint Sam Mjobe for, uh, what do you call it? power of attorney. So this document must have been um, detailed to Joyce for signature to go back to the lawyers in Kampala. They picked it up. We don't know where they found it. It looks like Joyce was in the process of signing it and send it back, offering, giving some job a power of attorney. She never signed. It's not signed, but it is there. I don't know whether it might help with legal processes. Uh, I think now the background. How do I come to be involved with Joyce? Uh, a child who, a friend of mine, Fausta, used to come to our house, spend you know, come shopping and spend a holiday with her husband. But in 1994, she arrives with this lady. I didn't know. Later, to be known as Joyce Katende. She was a nurse in Uganda and she had come to pursue her career in nursing in the UK. Now, they said, so far, so said, can you post her so that she finishes, she completes her registration so she can start nursing? We all right. She stayed with us for six months. We started registering, started doing agency work. And then subsequently, we lost her for a while, for a good 20 years. We didn't know where she was. And I, 2014, uh, we bumped into each other at the Shell, and she's well uh, green in St. Open, the Shell petrol station. She was feeling up, I was feeling up. And I was surprised to see her. I said, Oi, where have you been? Then she said, Oh, you know, I registered, I, I migrated to Ireland, I was working there, and I got married. The man called Fari. I congratulate you, Fari. Oh, welcome. So, um, then we started again communicating with each other until her illness came to happen. I don't think I have any more to say, but thank you so for coming. Giving us to bid farewell to our grand Joyce. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Um, good morning. I'm not so good with speeches, but I will try. Uh, 
My name is Sam Mujol, and uh, I'm a nephew to, to Joyce. I got to know Joyce a long time ago, but really getting to know her, I started, I got to really know her, I think it was around 2014, when she first came to Uganda after a very long time. So that is where, that is where my memory of her begins. I want to thank everyone. The Reverend Alice Motiava. Motiava is a name um, uh, belonging to the clan that uh, the W clan that Joyce belongs to. So, so, it's, uh, so it's, it's nice to know that uh, you know she's a sister. So it's nice to know that the brother is actually here. I thank the ruling team. Uh, you have really persisted to, 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 uh, to have this service. It's been a long time. How many, how many months? About, about five months. But you have really persisted up to now. Yeah, from October, you really persisted up to now. We appreciate it. And I, uh, I also thank my, my family here. I have, uh, have, I have relatives here. Um, aunties, uncles, uh, sisters, brothers, and they are, they are all here. I thank you for, for coming. I know it's my first time to be in London, and uh, I've actually seen that people don't, don't have much time, but you know, when someone sacrifices time, it's, it's precious. So thank you all for being here. And, uh, I thank Dr. Mara. I, I I cannot I cannot forget the, the call you made to me. I remember I was at work, I was in uh, I was in Kenya when you called me. It was very early in the morning, around 6 a.m. And that was that was a call that I really don't think I can forget. It was heartbreaking because you know we we're, we're, we're in the we're in the middle of uh, uh, doing a few Legal, a few legal documentations we have, and now I'm getting this news. So it was, it was shocking. And I just picked the call and called the way I told him, you know, just, just, just talk to him. It's not helping us anymore. But that's, that's what, that's what, that's, that, that is like. I came to believe that, you know, that is like. But Joyce, as Dr. Mado already said, uh, is a second born actually. Um, there were three girls. The first one passed on earlier, and uh, she has passed on. Um, she has passed on next, and there's there's one sister, as you already explained, and she's unfortunately I couldn't I couldn't bring her because you know, I, can, I cannot handle. I, I I don't know how to take care of her, but I just I just give support and in any way that I can. But thank you all for being here, and it's a great honor to know that she had friends. I just, I just used to, I just used to talk to her, and she would, uh, she would tell me about about things that were, would happen. Maybe some friends are attending these friends, but you know, you don't know who the person is. So even if she told me about you, I wouldn't know that you are the one. So, but but, but it's nice to know that you're here. It's really nice. And uh, <coughs> thank you. That is all I have. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe if there's uh, someone from Ibing or anywhere that you can. Yeah, if there are any other questions, if anybody can come on the board. Oh, um, before I call the next speaker, um, the consultant who treated her, um, there is, thank you, Joseph. Joyce was a lovely lady, always polite and kind, and she was very sad that she died alone. Yeah, I can't add any more than that. That's what she was. Yeah, she was a, a friend to my family, my children, advising her on the right uh, things to do. Yeah, so that sums it all up. Uh, welcome.
We know this is sad news, and we share our deepest sympathy with everyone in battle that tragedy. Our thoughts are with all you, all you guys. I, but I close by saying, for all who are grieving the loss of our beloved Joyce, please take comfort in knowing her life. Live, live on through our memories and memorable stories and their laughter and the love she shared with all of us. Joyce's light will never be taken away from us. Uh, it will shine. The spirit will remain alive in our hearts. Uh, and Joyce, rest in peace. I <laughs> don't know whether there is somebody who is going to do the reading. Is there somebody who can to do this reading? Page 6. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I 
and transcend the world. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
we need one another at a time like this. We need that community. It's a Sunday, it's very difficult, but at least we have committed to come here. This stops us short and makes us consider our own lives. And that's an appropriate and respective part of days such, such as today. On a day like this, we can seek solace in the promise of resurrection. A hope that transcends the bounds of earth resource. We we'll look up to God and we believe now, choice in the right hands, restore. Enough us reading, there's a time for everything. In the gospel reading, we heard Jesus offer words of comfort to the disciples before he died. We can take comfort from these words today. This happened at the scene at the Last Supper. We were having a meal with the disciples. Jesus knew that in less than 24 hours, he would die upon the cross to make amends for the sins of the whole world. Jesus knew it, and the disciples were not, not yet able to see it. However, the disciples understood that for some reason Jesus would have to go. And they knew his going, and not in the way it happened. It was not something they wanted to hear. Their hearts were. Jesus understand their upset, but he wants them to be reassured, and so he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. So many things come, and if death is one, bereavement is one of them, you end up being troubled. I was not saying don't grieve, or don't mourn, or don't cry. This will come. Remember Jesus himself, he wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. It's okay to pray, it's okay to cry, it's okay to pray. Come on. The tear that has shed when we lose a loved one has a right, a right and proper. Jesus was a denying the pain of death, but he was pointing beyond his home. Yes, there is death, but we look to the hope. We have a hope that is certain because Jesus has gone before us, that he is going through death and so into an eternal resurrection life. Honest people call Thomas a doubting disciple. Hey, Thomas, he wanted to know. He asked a question. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? He gave a question. Sometimes we feel asked these questions. Then Jesus was spot on and said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You have to come to me. So it was a genuine question, and Jesus gave the best answer. Yes, Jesus is not with us in spirit, but we know his spirit is with the Lord. We want to have heart. The time we have spent with him, the things we have done, the care, caring for our sister, being there for her family, and also to celebrate with our friends. Those are the spirits that are developing in our memories, and we should hang on that and thank God for her 69 years we had her. Thank God for that. And let that be a 
stepping stone to build bridges, connections, such that in our community we grow to know one another. In our communities where we work, we become with a joy, like you can't make it hard joy. It's not happiness. Yes, happiness is there in the short while, but joy. So let's keep like coming and do with that because you know, that's the only way we can build connections and reach out to them. We have a hope that is silent because Jesus has gone ahead of us. That is going through the into an internal resurrection life. These words also remind us the Lord's life does not end here, but continues in the breath, in the presence of the loving Creator who has prepared a place for us. And so we bid farewell to Jesus our platform. We take comfort in the hope of reunion, knowing that one day we will be reunited with her in the presence of heaven and Father. Let us therefore cherish the memories we share with Jesus. For the way are precious treasures that no person of time can be May her us of love, kindness, and resilience inspire us to live our lives with purpose and companion, honoring the imprint she left on her and our hearts. We trust her into the hands of the one who promises eternal peace and joy. May May you find comfort in the knowledge that Joyce is now at rest, surrounded by the, the boundless love of God. Amen. We pause for a while before we come. Response is Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer and our soul. Let us pray. God of mercy, God of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks for choice, for the grace and mercy she received from you for all that was good in her life, for the memories made to praise her today, especially her character, the way she linked up with us, the connection she created. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayer, you promise in time of life to those who pray, Remember for good this your servant Jesus. But we remember her. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom. We are seen have no have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord in your mercy. Amen. Your mighty power brings joy to out of grave and life out of death. Look in mercy on the family son, our sister, the wider family, our friends, and all who mourn. Give them patience, faith in times of darkness. 
things in the day and the knowledge of your love. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. In your hands. You are tender towards your children. Your mercy is over all your, your works. Fill the memories of, of heart and faith. Give us the wisdom and grace to use and raise the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ and follow his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Together. Okay. Pray, brethren, that my. Let's pray together the. Let's use this one. God of mercy, entrust into your hand all that you have made and rejoice in our communion with all of your faithful people. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So we now come to the next song, which is Pelasu Patri, which is on page 12.
Choice the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Saints of God, come to Joyce's aid. I think to meet Joyce, angels of the Lord. Receive Joyce soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who calls you take you himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of uh, Abraham. Receive joyous soul and present her to God the Most High. Internal rest grant her and to her all Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. God our Creator and Redeemer, by the power of Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises. We entrust Joyce to the mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much for attending this service of greeting farewell to Joyce. Uh, Thank you for the organizing committee and everybody has been involved, especially we start, who started it. So tomorrow we'll say no. They should 
have to see the funeral back from the diocese. So thank you very much for that. And the team carry my business. Yeah. It was not really bad to get to the costume and then all over to Uganda. At least to have saved the world. And have friends, colleagues, you are good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve, for sharing that. And of course, Sam, because even before even the to assign, she started to do the work, she laughed, because that's a very thing, investing in her to be taken off. Thank you for that. And being so I wish you well and we hope that everything goes well in your life. So I'm going to read one prayer and then we'll sing the last one. Yes, yes. Please stand. God will show us the path of life in his presence in the fullness of joy at his right hand. There is pressure forevermore until he is able to keep us from falling and to present us fortress before the presence of his glory with exceeding joys. Joy. To the only wise God and Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So let us sing to God be, to be, God be with you. Thank you.